Good afternoon, Pastor David. How you doing, John? Welcome, everybody, to A Random Moment with Pastor David Unfiltered. Well, welcome home, Pastor. Yeah, it's nice to be home. You know, I wanted to ask, one of the questions is, and it's not the topic I want to speak about, uh, you know, when you go to places like New York or to Mexico and you speak at these different conferences, you're speaking at a men's conference or a pastor's conference, we know the Word of God's across the board, straight across, it's the same. Yet when you're at a different different states or different countries, is the word received differently? Is there a, like a difference when you share, uh, especially being from California, going all the way to New Jersey or, or? That's an interesting question because I think that part of the way that we learn to teach here in the United States, at least, is by using illustrations that are familiar to those who live where you're at. For example, if I speak here in California and I make a joke about or mention an earthquake, we all understand that, right? <laughs> so it depends on, <clears throat> you know, what country you're in, how you illustrate. But when it comes to just a general teaching of what that word means, how it applied, especially we'll say in the context of during the time of Christ, then that just seems to, that, that goes cross-culturally. So you have to always be careful with things like uh, your illustrations or you have to be careful with your jokes. You, you know, in a lot of countries, our humor, the way we see things is, is so much different than how they see it. And so I don't tell jokes. And sometimes what happens is um, when you're speaking, the, the guy who is um, interpreting for you, mm -hmm. he won't understand the joke anyway. And so it just doesn't work. So yeah, when I go cross, con cross country, you know, here in the States, I can use general illustrations. But when I go uh, to other, other nations, different countries, I'm very careful not to use illustrations that they might not be familiar with. It looks like, huh? Well, what? they don't understand, you know. <laughs> and you have to be careful with uh, your word choices, too, you know, because you don't want to confuse your translator. So, yeah, there are a lot of little things that are related to that, but the core of the word is the same everywhere. And if you remain faithful to teaching the core of the word, you'll be fine. Well, that, well, I, that kind of segues into the question I wanted to ask. Last night we, were, we had a conversation, and, and I was asking you practically, I was asking you, how does one do ministry better? And that's a ministry question we can probably use for one of our mentoring classes. But I really liked your response, and it's a response that I've been thinking about across the board. You know, one of the things I was sharing with you is that I, I've i really never done things well. You know, it, it was always me that seems to mess things up. The only really thing, good thing I was really good at was my former life before Christ. I was good at that. You practiced. <laughs> right. That's exactly, mm -hmm. and that's what you had shared yesterday is practicing your craft. But the response that you gave me, and I wanted to ask you in a more practical sense how that works as the senior pastor of our church is the answer you gave to me in, in response to how do I do things better, especially in ministry, serving my wife, serving my children, is that you'd love. And I was thinking about how you always, you're known for a few things. You're known teaching the Word of God, and you're known to love your family, your wife, and your children, your grandchildren, but you're also known as loving the church. How do you do that in a practical sense, Pastor, being that we have a good-sized church here, how is it that you're able to, to communicate or demonstrate the love for our church members? You know, it's difficult to be able to um, express a per, in a personal way uh, your love for a group of people. It's just hard to do that. You have to hope that they understand that, that what you're saying at that time is, is true. There needs to be that sincerity um, and you need to do what you can to make those words uh, incarnate by, by what you do. And sometimes I can show personal affection and attention to somebody, but like you said, because we have multiple services and, and many people come and go, you never really get to know them. Or sometimes I meet people that um, well, tell me, this happened recently. I've been in this fellowship since 1998 or whatever, and I have never one time spoken to them. And they told me, they said, well, you know, I've been here a long time. I have just never taken the time to walk up and introduce mm -hmm. myself. 
So it can be awkward. So I, I believe that uh, from my perspective, the most loving thing I can do for this church is to prepare the very best Bible studies I can prepare, to give them the truth uh, uh, as clearly and accurately as I as a, a pastor teacher can do. I think I'm really loving the sheep when I give them the truth because ultimately that truth sets them free and ultimately that truth from scripture leads them to, uh, to a deeper knowledge of Jesus and, and what greater love can I show than to help them to see him more clearly as a teacher and, uh, and, and that's what I do, John. So if you wanna be a good teacher, you love the sheep. You know, Jesus said that. He said, if, 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 Peter, if you love me, he said, feed my and tend my sheep and my lambs. And uh, feeding them is giving them God's word and being faithful to him and loving him as you do that. And so to be a better teacher, you have to love the, uh, the people you lead. You have to love them, even if you never have an opportunity to know their name or to sit down and, and have a cup of coffee or tea or water or whatever with them. Um, because in many ways, I never will be able to do that. And you'll be amazed at the impact that makes. I was just in uh, upstate New York, just returned last night, and uh, several people approached me who had uh, first come into contact with our ministry over 30 years ago, because we were on the radio in upstate for many years. And uh, I had a couple sitting uh, at dinner, at one of the uh, dinners we had, and a lady said, uh, Pastor David, I just want to share with you that when my husband and I first um, came in and, and heard you because I was doing a radio rally, uh, the lady said we were on the brink of divorce. She wow. said my husband and I were unable to, to communicate. We did not have a connection. She said, and when I came, she says, I, w I had been listening to you on the radio. And she said... Uh, the way you love your wife, uh, she said, it just it just was so obvious and so tangible. This is 30 years ago, she says, was so obvious and so tangible then that it caused my husband and me to seek what you have. Wow. And so she said, and they've been married well over 30 years since the time she first heard, um, you know, a radio broadcast. So it's it's that kind of thing. It's it's having a transparency. I had several several pastors approach me saying that the thing that they were that they were ministered to uh, in, in the way that I, I share with people, one of them used that word, he said, is you're very transparent. Your, your emotions are very real and they're, they're not hidden from us. And he said, I, I actually appreciate that. Now again, that's just me. Not everybody appreciates uh, a, a transparent heart like that. Not everybody does. There are quite a number of people who prefer coming and getting information. Mm -hmm. Just give me the information. I don't want relationship. I just want to have fodder so that when I argue with people, I have good information. There are a lot of people like that. And there are churches built on informing, 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 and then sending them out to fight with people. Um, I don't take that route. And what I try to do is I try to give the word of God with a heart. You know, Paul said uh, that it pleased and blessed him to not only give God's word, but he said, but we also imparted our very selves to you, to the Thessalonians. And I think that's the heart of ministry, John, is to not only impart the word, but to impart your life mm -hmm. to people. That's why when Paul was speaking to the Ephesian elders there in his last conversation, and he shared, I will see your face no longer. Uh, that's why Luke w w took pains to record that they wept uh, most of all, because he said, I won't see you anymore. So there are people who will cry when I leave for joy, and then there'll be others who cry because they'll miss me. And so I, I, I do think that um, when you impart your life as well as the word, when you love the people enough to tell them the truth, when you try to be compassionate in the way you approach things and understanding of the weaknesses that we all possess, and you try to to present the word in a way that that isn't uh, harming to them, but but strategically surgical to help them um, to remove things from their lives so that they 
they, they don't have a tumor that's going to end up with them being hurt and, or die. Um, those are things that you seek in the Lord and that I, that I cover under the word. It's all under the umbrella of just loving the sheep. Yeah, amen to that. You know, because, uh, yeah, all of us can attest to that. Your faithfulness week in and week out to teach us the word well, of God. I, I'm not asking you to say that. But I appreciate <laughs> that was in our that. script. Was that on our script? No. <laughs> You're just trying to get a raise. <laughs> well, you know, one of the other ways, too, Pastor, that's demonstrated that I found uh, very practical is your staff also demonstrates love of others that is from you. Many do. And <laughs> hopefully everyone. I would hope. I was at, uh, well, I was at a restaurant with my wife and some gentleman comes up to me. He's staring at me right when I walk in. I told my wife, he either wants to beat me up or he goes to the church. <laughs> uh, and he comes up and he says, excuse me, I don't mean to interrupt. Uh, I'm here with my family. I just want to introduce myself. I said, hey, is your family here? And I went over there and greeted his family, came back. Ate off their plates. <laughs> was trying to, yeah, trying to get <laughs> their food your, off their plates. You had your bag. <laughs> I was loading it Trick up. Trick or treat. <laughs> but later on, he came back and he says, may I share something with you? I said, yes, please. He says, Pastor David always tells us that he loves us. And if I would have came up to you and you would have blew me off, I would have said, Pastor David isn't telling the truth. Mm -hmm. And it really opened my eyes that all of us are demonstrations of your love in many ways. And and, uh, and being aware of that, that what you teach from the pulpit should be a vessel that we're poured into to pour into others. I would hope so. And so uh, that was very eye-opening because I could have said, I'm meeting or where do you have tea? You know, I could have blown him off. Yeah. But, uh, but it's important even as staff and to represent the love that you give our church. And, and as you teach us week in and week out, that should be life transforming by itself. Well, I think Christianity is best described by a single word, love. Mm -hmm. You know, love fulfills the law. You know, so, yeah, it, 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 by this shall all men know you're my disciples if you love one another. Love is the earmark of the believer, and I, I really feel that uh, it's the one thing that sometimes is not evident. Yeah. Well, Pastor, thank you. And the great evidence is of come to church on Sunday uh, to hear your word you're speaking or teaching on the Great Tribulation. Yeah, at the conclusion and, and looking at the second coming of Christ as he returns. And so it's, I haven't, I don't think I've had a script, uh, um, excuse me, a, a message that has had as many scriptures as I have in this one. I'm, I'm, I'm kind of scripture overloaded in this one, John, to be honest with you. I, I hope that people can, I'm quite serious when I say this, I have, I have more scriptures than, than I generally have. And I just, uh, I hope I don't overload people but it's a it's it's as thorough a study as I can give mm -hmm. in a morning and you know it's important especially in these last days is that a lot of people are 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 misunderstanding the event of the rapture and the second coming mm -hmm. a lot of times they don't know the difference between the two what a great opportunity to come out and learn more about this it's the second coming it's yeah. the second coming after the tribulation mm -hmm. and so I want to invite your friends and family to come out and join us at 8 30 and 10 45 uh, COVID has lifted, yeah. so we'd love to have everybody that's watching online and come join us. It's about time. And come join us in worship and yeah. in the Word. And for those of you who are watching, are part of our fellowship, and have been avoiding church, it's time to come home. Amen to that. Pastor, thank you again so much. Thank you guys for tuning in. Also remember, always want to keep it in front of you that we have our Israel trip coming up in March. You can register online at calvaryccv.org. You can register. Uh, I haven't got a count for you yet, but it's a nice they size. have a good group. Yes, it's going to be an amazing trip. So, guys, uh, come on out. We look forward to seeing you. Pastor David, thank you so much. Of and course. Welcome home. Thank you. And uh, God bless you guys. We'll talk. We'll see you on Sunday.